<laughs> Hello and welcome to a commentated game of Infinity N4. This is a practice game for the upcoming Remote Access League Season 3, which is being run on the Infinity the Game Discord server by the admins, um, and administ entry for which closes in sort of a day or two at time of recording. Um, so this game is being played between Corregidor and Onyx Contact Force. Uh, we have Corregidor being played by Ben and Onyx Contact Force being played from by Ryan, and the scenario <coughs> is Biotech 4. Both players have drawn their three classified objectives and the first turn is underway. Ryan won the lieutenant role, uh, succeeding his whip 13 lieutenant, while Ben failed his whip 13 lieutenant, uh, and we'll run through his deployment and the initial movements he has begun to make. So along the left flank here, we have a core team, uh, an NCO Spitfire Umbra Legate leading a team of Unidrons. Mostly very generic Unidrons, but there is a missile launcher in there. Uh, the Legate, despite being Fizz 13, failed his confused deployment role, and so had to deploy along with the rest of the Unidrons. We then have a duo over here. A Surya HMG with Tinbot, not tactical awareness, and we can tell by the two lieutenant orders Ryan has that it is his lieutenant. Uh, and then the so Surya with um, Vulcan Shotgun, uh, completing the duo. HVT up here. And then the single combat group list rounded out by Kernal, Zeodron Multimarksman, and Umbra Samaritan all in a Haris. Um, the Umbra Samaritan allows the forming of the Haris with a Zeodron, and then of course Kernal is wild carding in. Uh, alongside this, we've got the Corregidor army deployed over here. We have a Moran that has failed its confused deployment role, a Transductor Zond, uh, a Harris down here of Senior Masakari with Eclipse Grenades, and two Jaguars, one with Chain Rifle, one with Light Shotgun, uh, a Ma 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 uh, Masai Moran Forward Observer, and it's Koala that has succeeded its um, confused deployment role, which is very useful in terms of the um, repeater area that it is projecting. A HVT, so uh, Jasmine Jazz, unlinked because there's uh, Billy over here, so he's using an FTO. McMurrow, who was the reserve drop, another Transdoctor Zond, and then a heavy core. Um, so the core consists of a Daktari, presently as a silhouette, but that's a Brigada missile launcher, a Brigada multi-rifle, telegraphed lieutenant, um, a Brigada uh, HMG, and an Evader with boarding shotgun AP mines, and an engineer. So this is a team with an engineer, a doctor, and a chunky bunch of heavy infantry. It's a very powerful fighting force. <clears throat> Ryan has liked to go first, which I think on the map and with the army that he's playing is the right choice. Um, but it is worth noting that it's a really interesting decision in Biotech 4 as to whether or not you go first or second. Um, there's, uh, there's always sort of like... Biotech 4 is kind of one of those scenarios where conventional wisdom is a little bit that it's a go-first scenario just because there is no benefit to going second. But I have found in the past I've actually been really successful going second in Biotech 4. Um, just because when you go first in Biotech 4, you tend to... The, the, the first player's turn tends to be a situation where you run everything forward because you want to escape the Biotech zone. Which means that if you're going second in Biotech 4, your first turn tends to be against an opponent who has run their entire army into the midfield for you to kill. Um, so if you play it right, it's a potentially very, very powerful option to go second in Biotech 4. But Ryan is running a single combat group list. It is a 13 order single combat group list, thanks to the NCO, etc. Tactical Awareness. Um, but I don't think he has the luxury of, uh, of going, <coughs> going second with the list that he's chosen. So we've seen sort of immediately some aggressive movements out with the Unidron link. There is kind of a line and a gap down here that you can see sort of the enemy deployment zone, this very thin sliver that the train is not occupying. But the players have agreed that sort of by intention, you are meant to be able to move off the train and onto terrain and the uh, vault, vault onto this, um, this high ground here. So we have the Legate that's moved up, the Unidrons, etc. And I suspect they're probably pretty much already out of the biotech zone. Uh, we don't have the grid snapped on, but if you're, I think the, um, if you just sort of eyeball it. And actually Ben, uh, so Ryan, I believe, has done, <laughs> has done ye old trick. And uh, I'm pretty sure that this new mark is deployed uh, exactly 16 inches up the table, which is just a... <laughs> Totally legal, and it's a really nice way of just knowing that you will be okay um, if it gives you a line to get your models past. So if models are past this new mark, then they are okay. So up here we can see this Legate is moving up, and it's moving up to get, yeah, line of fire to this Brigada over here. Now this is an interesting play, because he hasn't got the rest of his army clear of the zone yet. But um, it looks like he's moved up here and then snuck around here. Uh, Six-inch move, 6-2 in the Legate's pretty sweet. And he has Mimetism. 
Um, I don't believe a legate has anything more than that. And these ones better yeah, be just mimetism minus, minus three. But still, he has mimetism and a Spitfire, uh, and that's probably that's within good, 24 good. of the Brigada, which gives him basically as good a face-to-face -face release he's going to get. But if I had to put money on this, I would say that <clears> the this is almost yeah, this like is what uh, what Ben wants, because damage 14 is only only kind of a threat to the Brigada missile launcher. <clears throat> Um, in Ryan's shoes, what I would do here is I would take this gunfight, and assuming that the uh, the legate doesn't fucking evaporate to a, a crit from the brigada or anything, I I basically I take the gunfight and then I would leave it there to to spend subsequent orders on if nothing better presented itself, because he still has to get these Suryats could survive a turn in the uh, biotech war zone if they needed to um, but this team absolutely doesn't want to it wants to move forward and if you look at the, the terrain it has to occupy it needs to get pretty far up i wouldn't be surprised if they end up maybe like in this nook and cranny here um maybe fighting this transductor zond actually would be pretty okay but uh he's gonna have to have the orders for that which you know with one one tactical awareness order with the zeodron leading the team forward so here comes the gunfight so I think we've got all hits with 13 being the best, which means the Brigada needs to crit, and Brigada's probably looking for a 10. So let's see if the Brigada... No. Okay, so that means I think four hits have gotten through, the ones have cancelled. Uh, and there we go. Um... Oh, they've already rolled, I guess. Uh, so we have a wound on the mobile Brigada. Not sure where that wound has come from, it seems like they... They started rolling before I began paying attention. Um, looks like she's staying up. They're doing some quick checking of uh, quick checking of zones of control or stuff. Um, this Moran looks like he is standing, but I assume he is meant to be prone. Even with a combi rifle, he is far more valuable uh, as a repeater at this stage. But I don't think you have to. Yeah. Okay. Some prone unidrons. So it looks like there's been a gunfight. I may have to scroll up through the. Uh, yeah, no, okay, so it looked like there was a gunfight. Oh, here we go. So, um, I, I missed one roll. So, there was a 1 and a 4 from the Brigada, a 1, a 3, and a 4, a 6, and a 13. So, two shots got through, one of which caused a failed save, and it looks like the Brigada has used courage, at least at this stage, to hold its position. And that leaves uh, no lieutenant orders. They've all been spent from the NCO Legate. Uh, six regular and one irregular order left for the... On all its right. force to escape the zone, uh, which really it should not have any my, issues doing. So, with my Mr. Samaritan. Another thing to note is that it's not easy for this Brigada to get out so of the building that she's in. Although the players may have agreed that it's intended that you can vault over onto yeah. the dumpster in so order to get down. It actually looks pretty reasonable, so maybe it is easy for her to get out. Would have. Yeah, 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 before I go yeah, So the Legate has yeah, moved we'll into an out of line of fire to make that attack. Sweet. Oh, yep, okay, so there's another gunfight happening here. Two misses from the uh, Brigada and a volley of hits. Um, four hits from the uh, four hits from the missile launcher uh, with one failed save. So that puts her unconscious. Um, and that was a good like that was a good gunfight to take. Um, the I think the Brigada honestly got a little bit unlucky. Um, going down into uh, two face-to-face -face rolls, just because armor five plus cover, etc. Uh, but you know, um, the legate, uh, the legate did it. I think he's at this juncture kind of out of target's opportunity. Everything else is incredibly hunkered down or prone. He could move up to kill this trans doctor's on actually. So I think in Ryan's shoes, at this juncture, you look at the resources that you've got. He's just spending an irregular order now to move out the Zeodron team. I think the two remaining things that you want to do this turn are. You want to get everything out of the Biotech 4 zone, obviously. You want to get it out of the Biotech 4 zone and reasonably safe. I think that means probably something like the Suryats here. And I would actually be pretty comfortable with stuff moving along the low ground, but he's moving the um, moving the Zeodron out along the high ground, which is fine. I think the remaining two objectives you want to set yourself optimistically are kill this Transductor Zond and kill this Transductor Zond. Ben has left them out on ARO, um, sort of to slow down attacks to stop a penetration into his DZ, which is very reasonable. Um, but they also present kind of like things that Ryan can kill without over-aggressively spending, like spending orders that he can't afford to. 
So we might very quickly pull up the uh, army list <coughs> for Ben, if he has sent it to me. Uh, he hasn't, anyway. Um, so I'm not sure what combat groups what combat groups are where, but um, I suspect those transductor zones are not um, fueling anything absolutely critical. We'll see if we can check um, while players are moving. So yeah, just more, more movement here. Um, it would be really good actually to get a kill on the Masai Moran, but that's not impossible actually, pretty challenging. I think the, the that gunfight happens from like this bridge, you get line of fire, into his back, not his back sorry. arc. Oh, sorry about um, he's, that. He's, just checking to see um, if he's hunkered down, but uh, you think you can get some gunshots on him actually, which would be very worthwhile. Zeodron. This is a multi marksman Zeodron. Um, I much prefer the K1 uh, profile it, if you can take it, but it costs two more points, point. so sometimes you he's can't. Um, and like in this in this battle, yeah. the K1 like Let's, absolutely uh, would show its quality. There are a couple actually of models that would be susceptible to shock ammunition. So the Jaguar is obviously susceptible to shock. Uh, Senor Masakare actually also susceptible to shock now. Um, very worthwhile. But on the other hand, Masakare is armor two. Uh, the Jaguars are armor one, and then of course the Mobile Brigada are all heavily armored. A a K1 marksman rifle is effectively higher power against armor one and armor two and armor everything models. It's it's uh, it's damage 13, so is the multi marksman. Goes to 14 in the hands of a Zeodron. A K1 weapon with damage 14 is like intensely good. Ah, okay. So we've just spotted a uh, a flash pulse arrow. Oh, with the train on, yeah. It looks like the players are just checking to see. I think there's line of fire there. Um, I think they can see through the gap in the train, but the the players will have a chance of to see how they're playing it. It might come down to whether or not the. Uh, I, I would prefer yeah. to play it solid, but like we didn't discuss it. So, yeah. I'm not so there's a quick conversation on, now on, as to whether or not the, the bridge is solid or not. Choice. I think there's yeah, kind of a, a line over the bridge in any case, but <laughs> they'll just have a chat. They'll decide. Um, easy enough to. It, so the bridge certainly looks solid until you scroll down and you realize there's a gap, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, let's see. If we can't track down I forgot to put this guy's prime mark. a copy of Ben's oh, list. I, I assumed he was prime mark. I forgot to put uh, the mark there. In my mind. Yeah, no, that's mind. all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. In my, in my mind, he was, he was also prime mark. Like, <laughs> so they're having a quick chat. I don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> so I think this is, this is basically a pretty good first turn. The, the real disaster situation so for, uh, for Ryan obviously would have been the Brigada crits the Legate Spitfire. Um, and that is kind of the risk that you run with a list like Ryan's. There is really no failure tolerance uh, in a in a 10 model list. Um, now fortunately there are like there are models that have dogged, and this list really capitalizes on the fact that the Unidrons are all dogged. Um, having to chew through Unidrons, and in particular if we look at how Ryan has positioned the missile launcher to take advantage of this long glion down here, um, there's a there's a good chance that stuff that wants to move uh, up this board, and in particular, say like this mobile brigada lieutenant, I think it can get clear, okay. right? But it's not having an easy time. The link is going to have to thread the needle until it can take a gunfight, and now the link is down uh, the brigada missile launcher. That gunfight is more challenging. So Ryan's just rolled a number. I have no idea what a fourteen is for, or a fifteen. Is that dodging? Dodge they must be pass. dodging. Ah, oh, rat. Awesome. Good on you, buddy. You'd think I remember that <laughs> after getting like smashed with them like a million times. Uh, it's just something they added, I think, in N4. So he can go forward. So he's going to go maybe. prone. Yeah. And so the, it looks like we've done some, some move dodges and the. Uh, the Umbra is not super jumping, it's just a real challenge to get under here. For those who have not played a lot of TTS before, you can actually like left click to start moving and then right click and it'll sticky it to the surface that it is on. It takes a bit of getting used to, but you can get there. Um, and so there we go, the Umbra has made it underneath the overhang. I actually really like these buildings and this map in particular, we'll talk about that in a bit I think. But uh, the there is some finickiness where TTS does not handle the overhang this low to the ground. It handles, like, so for example, this bridge you'd have no issue with. You could move models around and move models up and over and the context sensitive, like, snap to works really well. But this, this much of a gap is sort of a bit of a challenge.
So we just do a quick order count check. We see it's the tactical awareness order and the uh, one regular order has positioned Ryan here. And it's going to take, it will take two orders to get his Suryats free and clear to here, behind this bus station or maybe up here or whatever. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, behind this bus station might be a mistake because uh, there's a, a Moran. But like, they'll want to get somewhere. You can look at places that would be safe, prone here and like prone here or prone here and here would both be fine, which we can tell because of how the new mark is positioned. And either way, it will take two orders to get there. So that means basically he has three orders of luxury to take gunfights, which could potentially net the three kills I talked about before, the Moran and the two Transductor Zons. Uh, the Transductor Zones are pretty hard to bring down, but definitely doable. What's going to be very interesting is if this Zeodron moves from its current position. I actually like where it's positioned a lot. Um, and for reference, it's a Zeodron multi-marksman and of course a Blitzen, which means that models moving uh, through the train, and they, remember there is a, a significant portion of the Link and Jazz are inside this train. The Zeodron is presenting a first two Blitzen ARO, and then as soon as it event eventually it will take damage from like the Brigada HMG and it will be able to guts around to here. Um, and that's really nice, particularly if sort of Kurnow and the Umbra end up, yep, we can see they're ending up nice here in this nook. Um, that's, this is really solid. Uh, this is a great like pin you down use of the high ground. Um, I, uh, I like it a lot actually, very cool. Just some prone movement, etc. Yeah, no issues with coherency there. So I think really the only risk at this point is we look at this order pool is if Ryan doesn't leave himself two orders to get the Suryats clear, and he just gives them one. Now, if the Suryats only have one order left, what they'll probably do is they'll just hunker down in here. And they can kind of, like, their BTS-6 wound, two wound infantry, they actually can just survive in the biotech war zone if they need to. Yep. But he's a risky boy. Um, I've got cover and mimetism, okay, so, yep. so it looks like he's gone for the Masai Moran. It uh, looked like that gunfight was happening at 16.2 inches, which is primo for a marksman versus a combi. I suspect there'll be a flash pulse coming back. <clears throat> got a 5. I think there's a crit on a 10. Um, so the Zeodrons landed uh, two hits. Now, the Masai Moran is uh, armor zero and it goes down. Presumably those are shock rounds, so blop, down it goes. That's a really nice pick. Um, so that that's the second kill Ryan has scored, um, but they are very very important yes. kills. The Morans have, so um, they don't have armor. They have no armor. There's a subsequent gunfight. Okay. Sort of like the transductors um, are are still on the table. Okay if I did, um, um, so yeah, this is this is looking this is looking good. I I honestly. Okay. I have to wonder <laughs> if if Ryan had not won the first turn, how would he be going? But I guess he could hunker down, and he could feasibly fight his way clear um, of a, a similar position. Like if if Corregidor went first and set up a position, like say the missile launcher on this overpass, just for example, then it's not impossible that Ryan could have fought his way clear, kind of under similar circumstances. Um, which I don't hate. So, we'll do this one so what have we got here? We've got a... looks like a flash pulse. Okay. Pass, and then the other one this might be unopposed from the Transductor Zond. I have no idea what's being rolled now, but that's okay. That Probably one. two unopposed flash pulses. Alright, let's see so how many... The one that, hit. that is a... Yep, two of them from the first that is a very stunned Zeodron. Cool. Yeah, it looks like he took, a, took ARO's in order to make that movement. Yep, okay. Zeodron, I mean, it's BTS six and it's in cover there, but uh, a one is a one is not a pass. But I think that's totally fine. I think it's done its job killing the Moran. That does. It doesn't actually lock out this transductor zone because there's a HMG down here. That I think it's like it, it can very easily, if it wants to, take a gunfight against the transductor. And that'll be four dice on tens versus one dice on sevens. Uh, very, very much worth taking if he's willing to spend an extra order or two. So let's see. Order's been spent. Yeah, here we go. So the, the Suryats are moving out. And, we go on. Um, and I think Ryan can 100% consider this a very successful turn. <coughs> it looks at positioning where it is now. These Unidrons are well positioned. This Harris is very well positioned. This way. Um, if he can kill even one of these Transductor Zones and end up taking no Biotech Force saves, I think he can consider that a very successful turn. So in this case, the Suryats are moving forward onto this high ground. I th honestly think I would probably have moved them along here. Any to kill this Transductor Zond. So. But there is 
There is a note which is that Senior Masakari and his lads are down here, and they would have a straight line path, provided they laid some smoke or suppressed the Zeodron, towards a Harry's hanging out behind here. So maybe it's uh, it's Ryan's read that he is safer if he comes up and around this way, but it is going to take more orders. Um, he needs to get them... I'm eyeballing this as best I can. He needs to get them, I think, up into this nook here, and maybe this nook here, to be safe. Um, so yeah, they're just climbing up and around. It's a very nice three-dimensional terrain, actually. I like how this allows for movement paths. Um, and this map, actually, in general... Um, I uh, I did not play in RAL Season 2, Remote Access League Season 2, but and basically because I looked at some of the maps and was like, whoo, those are not to my taste. Um, but this season they've released the map pack already, it's available on Steam, and even if you do not intend to play in RAL 3, the maps are really nice. Like, they are, they are not just beautiful, but they are playable. Um, they, they verge on the dense side. So, for example, if you look at this map, for example, um, I think this train has been added. Uh, yes, uh, may not have uh, been there uh, previously. Uh, I think you could play this map without the train uh, and have a line along here, and it would be fine. You could because you could block this with a smoke grenade. Um, but the decision to add the train uh, adds more deployment zone cover, which is very important um, in this scenario. Like imagine, basically, imagine a list with less robust defenses than Corregidor um, having to deploy with this being an open space. Um, that would be a nightmare. Using this train has given Ben some really nice cover to keep things safe from a turn one alpha. Um, so I sort of like, I think the inclusion of this terrain, is, this train, if it is indeed an addition to the map, is very cool. Um, but there's lots of maneuverability. There's one map, their rescue map that they've chosen is gorgeous, but kind of taking the piss a little bit in terms of how incredibly like... <laughs> Um, it's multi-leveled. It, it's not it's not Raymond Roddenberg levels of multi-leveled, um, but there are functionally two and a half elevation levels. But it's it's a busy. It's beautifully beautiful looking. It's a street map with like a car crash and like city slums and everything. But imagine like these tile sets, these Koyoko quarters by MicroArt Studio. He's used in life. It would cost like a thousand dollars worth of these things to make the table that, that has been used for uh, rescue. Um, but this map for Biotech 4, I think, is a great Biotech 4 map. A lot of attention has been placed on, like, deployable uh, uh, deployment zones, qualities. especially with the addition of the, tr of the train. Um, the rescue map is beautiful, and it'll be very interesting to play on. Um, but the, there's a power pack map that I love because it is obviously designed for power pack. Um, and the bane of power pack as a scenario is that people don't design it for power pack. Um, I have had games. Uh, just looking, talking to the lads during deployment, actually, about the the game that everyone has had. One game, right, where you uh, you play on a table that just hasn't been built for power pack, and you fucking die because there's no train in the deployment zones. But the table that was provided for power pack, I think, was actually built by maybe Persian um, and one of his friends, and it's just mint. It's just perfect for the scenario. It's well set up. Um, Lovely use of elevation, oh, yeah. etc. So the map, the map pack for RAL3 um, is available on Steam. The workshop it's just called uh, Remote Access League Maps. You'll recognize it. It's got a big stunned Infinity stunned status logo. Go and download them because they're sweet. Um, again, reminder: the uh, <laughs> RAL uh, RAL registration closes. Let's have a quick check. Um, so if you're not a member of the Infinity of the Game Discord, usually pretty easy to secure an invite. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very well-run Discord. It's got a ton of information. There are channels for every faction. It's a very active community. Um, but uh, just doing a quick check. Yeah, so um, sign-ups for, uh, for RAL Season 3. It has two divisions, Casual and Beginner. Uh, sorry, Casual, Beginner, and ITS, rather. It has three divisions from the looks of it. Um, are due... Close of business on the 29th of uh, 29th of December, uh, and that's 29th of December, um, far side of the dateline. So if you're an Australian, for example, you've probably got until the morning of the 30th to uh, to figure your shit out. And again, they're just sort of finalizing the deployment. Yes, yeah, so it looks like what we've got here is Ryan. Rather than try and take any more gunfights, I think it would have been sweet to try and take a HMG gunfight against one of these transactor zones. But Ryan's decision to move up around this way, he's had to snake forward, um, has left these Soryats. They're very safe. Although this one is standing for some reason, and I will remind you it is Lieutenant. But um, 
It's left him without an opportunity to secure kills against the Transductor Zones. Which, you know, I mean, he could have even potentially taken a gunfight from here. Uh, this, uh, like the corner of this. Um, if we just sit down. I, I'd have to toggle on the Transductor Zones uh, silhouette, but I reckon if he was standing on this ledge, he'd have a shot at that Transductor Zone. And it would have been worth taking one, one shot at least. But it is what it is. Um, this positioning has made him safer against the... Uh, the Jaguar Goon Squad and Senior Masakare, they'll have to sort of sneak up and around themselves. But I don't think it's making them, made them a ton, a ton safer. So we'll see. Slightly conservative play. Presumably no classified scored, but that's very reasonable. It's very hard to do classifieds on your first turn, except maybe Spotlight. Um, so, yeah. I think overall this is a pretty successful first turn for the Combined Army. No casualties, a couple of casualties on the enemy side, and in, they're important casualties. Uh, Mobile Brigada going down has reduced the... Um, link bonus of the uh, the Brigada link. And importantly, like it's going to cost orders and command tokens to bring her back. She might just get left in the biotech war zone. Um, and then the Moran as well. Um, that's not just a kill on an important model. It's a kill on a model that would have generated an order and that could have been spent by models escaping the zone. Because the thing about this Moran, right, is that it made the roll. It got up past the um, the death zone. It was free and clear. And so by being free and clear, its order could be used to pull other models forward. Because the nature of Biotech 4 is that if you don't have order efficiency, um, nothing, you can't get things clear. Because it will always take two orders to get a 4-4 model beyond the 16-inch 16 um, plague zone. So the killing this uh, Moran is sort of like, in a sense, it's almost like taking away more than just taking away an order. Um, so I think we're about to see, yeah, there's just some, some final finicking around and they're checking positioning, etc. Looks like maybe he spent one last order um, on the Unidron link um, to move some things around, but I'm not sort of 100% sure what's going on here. There's just... What's your big gun in your core? Um, just fuck's sake, but that's okay. So we'll swap our perspective now to the uh, the Corregidor player. Um, yeah, who looks like they're about to start moving out. So there is still a link here. Uh, no <laughs> it's a link of four. Um, and it's still a uh, HMG multi-rifle engineer doctor link. And of course it's an evader engineer as well. Uh, it's a boarding shotgun evader. So this... This uh, this team is still very capable of taking fights, but things are just a little bit dicier now. And in particular, finding Unidrons when they 100% will go dogged <laughs> is just a tick. Um, seem to have a floating mobile brigada there. I'll see what that's about in a bit. Um, Unidrons, because they have remote presence, um, so they have two <coughs> levels of unconscious, reducing a Unidron all the way to dead is a hell of a challenge in one order, which means they almost always get value out of Doggard. It's a me finished. Okay. So uh, everyone should be outside of the zone, so I don't check it. Uh, yeah, I, th I believe so, yeah. Okay. It's also a quite uh, quite quick um, turn from Ryan, bring it up just to make sure. which is uh, sometimes a little bit of a challenge when you're playing an army. I think this is his first game with Onyx Contact Force. So we'll just give Ben a moment to figure out how he's going to play this turn, because this is a challenging position. Um, the the Legate is not really in an Overwatch position, but it is, say, looking down here, which is the probable escape route of these Jaguars. Um, and the Legate is like, it's a core linked model with, with Mimetism and uh, Mimetism, link bonuses, no winning cap, etc. So it's sort of like, it's not trivial to push past. The missile launcher, of course, has this uh, this long lane bracketed, and then the Zeodron threatens its blitzer. Um, or just, like, imagine if the Transductor moved first, for example, it would just fire a speculative multi-rifle shot and be damned. We can also have a look at Ben's order pool, and we can see, okay, so he's got nine in the first group, um, three and an irregular in the second. So in terms of casualties, we can deduce that the Mobile Brigada was in the first group, and the Masai Moran was in the second. And that would be like, second group would be like McDoggo, Masai Moran, Masai Moran, and probably the Transductor Zons, um, with the remaining two. I can't think of anything else. Um, which one? Well, maybe Billy and Jazz actually might be in the second group. And then, whichever Billy and Jazz and the Transductor Zons aren't in group two, are in group one, along with the two fire teams. I don't. 
because the shadow of the train definitely looks like it's blocking your entire base. Okay, so, so the doctor? <clears throat> I don't know how the fuck she's um, gotten up there. <laughs> So I have no idea how the doctor has got. I mean, she's he's cloned her to see how she might get there. Um, so I think it's just a discussion of if you can vault. Like stick up on top of the thing, but I would I would be inclined to say that you can you can vault that doctor. Yeah, she, yeah, it's that just that she will be seen by yeah, 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 there's Unidron's watching. <laughs> While they are figuring this out, just going to take a moment to remind people. Uh, I enjoy yeah, doing these. Um, these mm -hmm. commented games, uh, and I have received uh, some feedback uh, in the past that people <laughs> enjoy having their games commentated and learn things in the process. Um, so if anyone, uh, or or maybe not, but uh, nothing else, it's it's reasonably fun and it makes for some content. Um, so if anyone would like to have their games commentated, please just reach out. I'm hoping to be able to commentate some games as part of the Remote Access League. So if you uh, if you're playing in in RAL three season three. Uh, and are okay to have your games commentated, um, let me know, reach out, and I will... Uh, it's very unobtrusive, basically I jump into a Discord server with you and I jump into the... What's this, sorry? I jump into the actual um, uh, TTS client, but then I mute myself, so the players can't hear me talking, they're just playing a game, um, and I am blathering into silence while I listen to them. You come back off and take shots, but you're not able to do that in an least code one. Just more conversation here. I think Ben is probably being slightly anal attentive about how vaulting works. Um, this is kind of a philosophical question, which is the rules actually are relatively clear in terms of you can't vault while vaulting, your base must be fully supported except while you're vaulting, etc., etc. But the secondary consideration is how did the map builder intend the map to play? Because sometimes there are like very slight, okay, so like, oh, I think the, a model space, for example, you might see a crate that has been positioned to allow for some vaulting, but maybe it doesn't allow a model's 25mm model space to be supported by like one millimeter of difference. <laughs> or it's one of those crates that tapers slightly. If the terrain looks like it has been set up, or if you built the terrain, and it's set up to allow for sort of a certain functionality, there's, a, like, there's that question of like, hey, very strictly speaking, it's supposed to be played this way, but the game will be better if we play it this way. Yeah, how how is the terrain meant to be played as created by the the terrain maker? Um, and in this case, I I feel like at least that this table is improved if you are allowed to vault from this dumpster onto this. Uh, if you're to vault from this dumpster onto this uh, Kyoko Market building, even though actually you would have to clear the parapet and then over it, it's all very complicated. So. All right, so we've got to move forward so the Gemara. Um, the, the backwards move by yeah, the Legate right, means that the Gemara is pretty free and clear, except for, yeah, here we go, yeah. So we've got a cross range, um, blam blam, cross range shot from the Zeodron. Uh, we've either got a smoke or a dodge, looks like a social dodge from the Gemara, getting himself through the Zeodron's line of fire. Uh, good use of Impetuous. Oh, it looks like a regular. He didn't take that as his Impetuous. That's interesting. Um, but regardless, yeah, so we've got, we've got a stand up, Hopping over, up here. dodge, move. Maybe he did as he's impetuous, and now there's some movement up. And it's going to kind of... McMurrow is a piece that... He's actually a bit shit against Unidrons. <clears throat> Not because he's bad at killing them. He's very good at killing them. Or rather, he's very good at making them go dogged. One Which is not actually what you want, because they will shoot him, and they will use hit mode on their plasma carbines, and he's total immune. Yeah, um, but that doesn't actually matter against plasma weapons. Um, McMurra takes both armor and BTS rolls. They don't have an ammunition type, so he takes two safe. Plasma is one of the better weapons against total immune models, and they will just shoot him. They won't try and dodge. Um, they will shoot him, and they will kill him, and they will take chain rifles, and they will probably go dogged, but then they'll be doggered, and you still have to fight them, and McMurray's likely to be dead. Um, so, yeah, just a reminder for those people at home, if you are having trouble with dog warriors, and you do not have access to viral weapons, see if you have access to plasma. Um, three factions in the game do. That's Combined Army, O12 via Hector, and, Com um, and Aleph, also via Hector. Okay, well, right, so there's just some movement there. here, McMara moving up these, uh, McMara moving up these hills. Yeah. Yeah. What um, is going to be interesting is it? seeing whether or not Ben is actually able to oh, exfiltrate so Ooh, his okay. entire army okay. so from the zone. Um, I've played against Ben before, he's a very Jeez. solid player, he and Ryan both are actually. Yeah, so um, a couple of shots the, the, the reputation of Melbourne is that they are first in fun. 
um, <laughs> draw tr draw what conclusions from that you will. But actually, it, like especially over like the last, actually really just since N four, but even sort of towards the closing of N three, um, they they carry that rhetoric and like absolutely are lovely guys. They're just the best to play with. Um, but they're also like kind of good like the the um the community in melbourne has obviously developed sort of a critical mass that is sufficient to let them get really good practice games in because there are some players in melbourne that are just like really really solid and it's the kind of solid that you get not just from having like oh, there's one good person in melbourne it's like i can think of the entire or most of the loss of lieutenant crew um like there are a few new players who also record with loss of lieutenant but like all of the regulars in Lost Lieutenant are really good players. Um, Gee, the, then there's like um, Ryan so from um, Ryan, who's from Melbourne, is really good. Um, has come very close well, to clubbing yeah, me a couple of times good. recently. No, uh, uh, ben is a really solid so player. Sure. Like they've got this community. Um, they did a little that's Melbourne that's League recently, that. and just some like not just great play, not just like great people to play with, but also really good players. So uh, I'm interested to see. Okay, so we've got some smoke that's potentially coming down here from McMurrah. Ah, this is clever. So McMurrah has taken this elevated position here, which lets him see down to where he needs um, to get some smoke down to cover potentially the Daktari um, making a run on the Brigada. This is a long-range smoke throw. Ah, I needed a 13. Um, I'm... One and three! A little... What? A little skeptical of that. Yes. One's good. Takes a wound. So I assume that McMurrah is just getting shot <laughs> by like this Zeodron or something <laughs> from across the map. Um, so the yeah okay. So the the question what, what's happening here is that there is an attempt to he's using McMurrah under fire to try and allow his link to Wait, pull out with the Brigada Missile Launcher. Where did you start? You started which like, I... Yeah. So I, think I, could have yeah. I respect the decision to do that, but I'm not 100% that it's correct. Um, and the, yeah. the reason for that is sort of like... Sunk cost isn't the right way of putting it, but the Brigada is already unconscious. Think about the potential loss of life that is going to happen if you can't get even the four-person link clear. Um... Two more shots from the Zero drone. So, alright. Um, good money after bad. I think this might be the end for me, Mara. So what's happening here is he's he's really wanting to get the uh, circular template down. Um, and he is, yeah, taking gunfire along the way. So, what what could have happened there? And um, it didn't matter because you rolled the 20. But he had the option of having McMurrah move three inches out into space and three inches back to get range. Would not have saved him from the Zero drone shots, obviously. But... Uh, the, I think I think this smoke was kind of like yeah good money after bad. Um, so as is he has to fight his way clear now, probably by moving the core link up and around to here, and from here taking a gunfight with the Zeodron. The Zeodron will probably blitz in, but you have an engineer behind you. This is a fine gunfight. It's more than twenty four inches, probably. It's going to be very close. Um, sort of to push your way clear. He's actually really interesting. This is probably uh, one of the more successful bracketing Zeodron. efforts I've seen. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, anyway. I mentioned before that I have often liked going second in Biotech 4 because <laughs> your opponent moves to put their entire army in striking distance of your army, so you can get these really powerful counter attacks. But in this case, we've seen Combined Army execute a really effective bracketing move where, yeah, that happens, but the offensive, the like pushing through the the um mm -hmm. the bracketing yep. elements is savage. Um, uh, he's gonna evolve did you want there's to kind of a question the, like was deployment by Corregidor correct? And in particular this mobile brigada, was she deployed properly? Um looking at the map, I think the players have an agreement not to deploy on these sloped roofs, which is fair enough because like it's just a huge pain in the ass. Um <laughs> Because they, uh, the models just fall off of them if you don't lock them in place. But like, I think, especially since he saw what he was up against, would the missile launcher have been better positioned maybe back here, or maybe back behind this um, pickle van? Or like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he had to be able to deploy the link, and he made the decision to deploy the link in the... Um, 
uh, in the the train, which is very good cover, and it sort of has cost him a little bit. So yeah. Okay. Nice. So what have we had? So we'll spend an order on Senior Massacre. I can't read these cards. I change my color to Game Master really quickly. There we go. So okay, cool. So experimental drug has been done, and it looks like what we had there was a Daktari firing an extremely long range shot into McMurrah. If he crosses like this, very nice. So we've had a long range shot from the Daktari into McMurrah, which has uh, has very cheerfully recovered him. So he's back alive, and there's a uh, one classified on the board. Classifieds in biotech four are a big deal. Um, not only is there one point for every classified, but there's a point for doing more, which means that your classifieds add up to four of the six points that you can score, which is like a lot. Um, that's that's often determinative, particularly given that in many scenarios you're racing not just to win but to score five points. Um, getting your classifieds on in biotech four is a big deal. So I want to block nine of fire, so you can't shoot the bag. Smoke. It's like can't shoot the bag. So, only two orders left. <clears throat> I assume at this stage it's the transductor zones, and they're probably not terribly long for this world. Um, and that's kind of, there's a testament there to how effective it can be if you do successfully bracket your opponent in Biotech 4. They just, they just end up being casualties to the zone because you couldn't get everything clear because it takes orders to fight your way past. I think maybe there is a mistake being made by Ben not choosing to fight his way past but to try and smoke up because you've got to get kills um even if you get those kills by just like pushing through and doing what damage that you can so yeah they're just checking positioning this this zeodron here on the high ground is proving very effective just with the threat of its multi-rifle and its blitzen um, obviously in ARO it'll fire double action rounds, which is kind of a point that differentiates it from the K1, right? The, um, as much as if I, if I have access to it, I would much prefer the K1 marksman rifle on the Zeodron. Double action rounds are certainly more effective against lightly armored targets in ARO. Um, you go behind the first one, first, first one for a double action round, but up to, uh, first two because of the link. Um, and being able to fire double action rounds after the Blitzens are exhausted is, is pretty good. We'll just move You're fine. Um, so also, Zeodrons, for me, are an untested unit in N4, and they're untested because I'm mostly a vanilla combined army player, so I can't link them. Um, but they're fascinating because of bioimmunity. Um, bioimmunity on a tag with BTS-6 positions them as circumstantially incredibly tough. Um, and because, in particular, what it makes them is kind of just immune to armor-piercing weaponry. Uh, if a Yotam is being shot at by an AP Spitfire, for example, his armor goes down to 5, plus for cover, etc, etc. But if a Zeodron is being shot by an AP weapon, then what happens is that the AP round reduces his armor from 5 to 3, and keeps his BTS at 6, and then he chooses to take his saves on his BTS, um, making him, basically, he's affected by breaker rounds, but against breaker rounds he chooses to use his armor 5, and against armor piercing rounds he chooses to use his BTS of 6. So you have this model that is like, actually shockingly resistant to anti-tag weapons, which is really interesting. Okay, so... This looks like it might be being one of those games for poor Ben. Um, yeah, we've just seen uh, two dice, 16s. <laughs> Fail on a 17 and a 20. I, I feel for you, Ben. I think they need to make a rush at this juncture. Um, I think the play for this Harry's is to fucking leg it up and around this way. And there is also kind of a question to be raised which is, can this Brigada team stay in the zone? Um, and the reason why I say that is that there are four heavy infantry and the Daktari. Now, you don't want to lose the Daktari. But if the 
if the Daktari um, makes I her BTS roll, then the I link is fully yeah. intact. Now she probably won't. She'll probably die. Get the Daktari clear. Yeah. But if you have to stay in the zone because no, you, for example, have an opportunity to kill an no, entire Harris with this uh, entire enemy Harris with your Harris, the then is it worthwhile um, to just take casualties? Oh, yeah, like, so you know, so no, they're just finicking around um, with templates, having a bit of a rules yeah. discussion. Yeah, so I think, think this Masai Moran is going um, to die. <laughs> I don't think he's getting clear. Getting touched. But we will see. If that makes sense. Have I been booted or am I? Yeah. So we've had some failed smoke. I think they're looking up a rule, which is fair enough. The Harris definitely can get clear. I suspect Ben has done the same thing, where he's used his uh, candy cloud here as the marker for which he has to has to get past. Yep. This is potentially if if. Uh, if Ryan survives the remainder of his turn intact, and it's looking increasingly like he might, like I'm speaking pretty soon with eight orders still in play from the Corregidor player, but I feel like it's going to take most of those eight orders to get stuff clear out of the zone, and it, at least he wants to get this Harry's clear. Then he's in a savage position. Uh, ben, yeah, um, I still can't hear you, man. What's uh, everything okay? <clears throat> Okay. Looks like Ryan ben. has muted himself. Hello. Just gonna jump in really uh, quickly. Oh, it looks like he's muted himself for some reason. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh that's I've I've uh, I've become aware of this. <laughs> I assume he'll be back in a moment. Yeah, I'm back. Oh, hey man, how you doing? Okay. Yeah. Hey Rob, before you go, we got that right, yeah? You just placed the template now, right? For smoke and stuff? Uh, no, I think it's the same as it was in M3, where you nominate a point and then um, place the template. Uh, gotcha. Sorry. To my, to my regret, but I think it still played that way. Oh, that's cool. Okay, awesome. So that's working then. Okay, cool. So we'll activate the Ningtoon. Alright. So the so smoke's uh, gotten down. And it looks like, yeah, okay, he's, um, I'm not sure what the smoke is for, but presumably to stop the, uh, the Zeodron from killing something. Alright, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like the smoke is to stop the Zeodron, well, it's not going to stop the Zeodron from, yeah, fuck if I know. I don't, I don't actually know what that smoke is protecting. But the players may have agreed that it's placed in a way that protects the uh, the Daktari. Well, I think she can so. actually bolt on top of this and see the... Yeah, cool. So the Daktari's going up and up. Sure. Now, for my money, I um, think there's a good chance she's in line of fire. But maybe maybe she's okay, though. Maybe she's okay. So she's getting up and clear. I would not be surprised if she just rolls the paramedic gun rather than try and... Uh, rather than try and make the doctor roll. Um... Is one yeah, okay, so she hit one, so... See if they get up. They yeah. do. And it so works. So the, the linked the linked burst 2 minigun no. rolls one hit, and that one hit brings back the, uh, the, the missile launcher. <laughs> and so, big question now is, <laughs> does he does he reform the core? And if so, what does he... No, it's not does he reform the core. Yes, he reforms the core. He went to all this fucking trouble. But having reformed the core, what does he actually take a gunfight with? Because there's the missile launcher in the distance, and then there's the Brigada HMG up here, ready to move up and fire full five burst. Um, I suspect... Bect, he so takes the shot with the missile launcher first and gets her down here, down here, and down here. Brigada being 6-2 movement now. Um, and then if she goes unconscious, then you doctor her, and if she goes um, bricked from a blitzen, then you try and engineer her. And you take the, the fight with Brigada HMG and subsequent orders, but things are getting pretty slim. And he might want to just invite the shot. Let's see. What would you like to do? Okay, so he's uh, he's doing neither of those things. He's he's idling in position, or he's holding in position with the Brigada yeah. missile launcher. So, 
So the reason why this might be a mistake is that if she used her six inches of movement to pull back here behind the smoke and then vault down, she would be in a position where the Vader could fix her if she goes unconscious. So it's 31, so you should be negative six because of cover and bad range. But he's responded with yep. uh, DA rounds from the, um, the Zeodron. Oh, so fair enough. So this is going to be two dice 16s versus two dice sevens. And I'm using the template mode. Ooh, that's a very good roll. So Ryan is looking for a crit here. Oh. Oh. That's filthy. You can hear the players. Six of them. So she is dead. Seven's okay, is it? So yeah, seven. Seven. That's you can, uh, I think you can hear me sucking, sucking air in between my teeth there. So oh, that God actually damn. might well be the death knell of this this game. We'll see how the Nomad player responds. I'm actually getting furious for you. Um, but that's uh, that is that is savage. Um, and it's also a bit of a question of like, so she's uh, she's unconscious right now based on the rolls there. Um, I think she failed two, but I'm not 100. percent No, no, the seven was okay. So she only failed one dice. So there's a point of optimization that could have been made here. If she had started there and she had moved back along behind smoke and then popped down, the Daktari would be right next to her and so could just pick her back up. But with her prone on this rooftop now, he just does not have enough orders. He does not have enough orders to get her clear. Um, and I think that is actually a pretty serious misplay. Um, the decision to leave her on the roof is a serious problem. Um, the Daktari will not get back up there easily. And if she, like, she could, right? But you, you don't want to be fighting this Zeodron <laughs> forever. Sorry about that, mate. Just order dinner um that was dumb i kind of feel like we should just re-roll those dice because it makes no sense yeah so the players will see what they talk about <laughs> okay let's see what happens if uh you don't get a double quit so long well, six armor same <laughs> <laughs> so i think i think between you and oh, me yeah, viewer, good Lord, like, no i just die they might have just had an uh, agreement yeah i don't like, think you just die tag. i think the seven's okay I think you just take two. No, sevens are not okay. You go. So this was the this was the hypothetical roll if the Zeodron doesn't four, double crit, four, four. Uh, in which case it, it gets destroyed. Oh no! No, he's unconscious because he's got G1 might poison, so he's like unconscious. Uh, level those are four wounds, engineer, which puts it in unconscious level two. Now that's that doesn't matter because there's no engineer. There's no difference okay, between so, unconscious level two. Uh, okay, so I have actually, I have deduced from context so clues that we are facing a divergent seven, reality oh, here. Lord. Um, so I, I want you, the viewer, to imagine two possible circumstances. The first is with the one in which the Zeodron double crits the uh, double crits the mobile brigada, and and frankly, kinda ends the game. Um, it is possible for the Corregidor player to escape the cordon that he is stuck in. Um, the HMG can feasibly fight down the Zeodron. Um, and then push up forward, and of course there is plenty of potential for smoke from this link team. Um, but I, the, the first turn by Corregidor has been just a little bit too confused. There have been just a couple of plays that like could have saved him an order down the line. Um, which, and of course there's been some tremendous bad luck as well. There's been failed smoke on, on multiple different models. Um, so there's, there's, one, there's one history in which, frankly, much of the Corregidor army gets left in the biotech war zone and dies, and the game is mostly just a matter of mopping up by the Onyx contact force. Um, off the back of this very effective cordon that Ryan established. Here we have an alternate history that is playing out in which the players, for the sake of a good practice game, just agree that the Zeodron didn't double crit <laughs> um, and force six saves on the mobile Brigada. And, and in that case, basically what happens is that the Brigada um, punches through the Zeodron and they, they sort of like have a game to play. Um, I'm not sure which one of those they are actually going with, um, but there was like a, hey, what would happen if I had failed? The, the hits and the Zeodron. Yeah, the Zeodron would have just gone straight to... Uh, well, it would have gone to unconscious level two, but there being no engineer means it can't uh, what be do you saved. Do? Do, you wanna, do you wanna say that you just won that roll and then we actually get like a prop game or do you just wanna play it out like a like a true buff? Yep, they're just chatting about that now. How about which of these two futures they want to, to proceed into? Ooh, Ben's gone again. I mean, I am certainly interested to see what happens if the uh, oh. 
the Corregidor player can actually push one out, guys, if that's influencing your decision at all. Yeah. I just, like, I just, oh, man, that's, like, I get pretty on tilt when, like, I, I get critted against and, like, Ben's just being an absolute trooper, so, an absolute trooper, so, yeah, I'm sort of pretty excited to see what happens. Um, <laughs> but if ben, if ben flips the table, I'd also understand that as well. Okay, I'm back. So I think what we'll hey, do is when they have to reforge the next team because the team leader went down. <clears throat> Team Nader will be the Dakatahi. <clears throat> did I donate the marker? I think I did. Yours. Actually, no, no, it's a wood marker. <clears throat> so I think what we'll do is everything basically is moving here. Yeah. Yep. Gonna move. Fight there. All right, we got some link movement here. Okay, so it looks like basically what they've decided is that they will play it as it lay, uh, which is fair enough. Um, so, one up here. Ben, yep, Ben is attempting to recover the situation, same as before. Um, and uh, you want to go a bit quicker? Like, can you see him? From this, like, I from this bin? Don't think so. I don't think yep. I'm All right. So the the Corregidor is player is accepting their bad luck, like, and that they cannot like possibly be game. that bad the entire is game. Um, and is seeing what they can do to push on out, which is fair enough. So we'll we'll have an interesting sort of like visibility here of um, and I'll shoot it. what what I'll is possible. So the uh, the Zeodron is is reaping a bloody toll I'll still. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, and so it's, it's taking unopposed shots. Um, as Ben attempts yeah. to recover. So we've got the Zeodron uh, scored a hit. Um, meanwhile, the Daktari has hit the Brigada yeah. twice with her medigun. Um, so uh, seven. And, a, and, a, and eight, another one. Because it's double. Shouldn't be enough. Oh, yeah, double action. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> oh, they go unconscious. So we got a wound on oh, the Brigada God. HMG. Okay. And the missile launcher is back oh, up. That's where the team leader went. It was underneath that. Okay. <clears throat> And all of one command token left oh, yeah, here for the uh, the courage door player. <clears throat> now again, as before, I think the major issue here, and the major issue that could have made the turn easier for Ben, is if he had, in this face-to-face -face <clears throat> roll that went so egregiously wrong, pulled the Brigada back and down. Um, this this whole play is like okay, so much harder than it needs to be game. because he has to keep yeah, pulling this Daktari up to heal. Uh, although, Daktari this is kind of like down. commentary on just there. how still nine of fire. Well, he's in flexible and tough this fire team module is. And I actually really like the composition of the fire team. This is not egregiously expensive, and it's very high quality. You've got the Evader boarding shotgun, the Brigada HMG, the Brigada missile, the Brigada multi-rifle flamethrower lieutenant, and a Daktari. That's a lot of wounds and a lot of power for a very reasonable yeah. cost, and in particular it is incredibly uh, self-sustaining. Um, because the Brigada are so tough, they're yeah, really only yeah, susceptible to like so hacking, yeah. bad luck, anti-tank weapons with armor 5. So so um, having the Daktari around, well, this has some, been some absolutely atrocious uh, luck I'll from the uh, for the Porker Regidor player, the, uh, and yet he's tanked on through. Or? Now, Biotech uh, 4 makes this move. really fucking so hard, because he doesn't have the luxury of yeah, sitting around where he is, and just like Slow, slow rolling the so, game. Um, uh, I will shoot. Yeah, but, I'll uh, face it against the missile. Okay. So I the the fact that this link is intact through some absolutely yeah. egregious Two dice points. is very impressive. All right. So you've got missile launcher yeah. shots again, oh, God, and this time, uh, so six six saves. Saves. this time two missiles have connected the Zeodron, uh, Boy, and it is, eight, I want to say, nine, unconscious. Nine, nine, seven, so. seven plus five. Yeah. Um, and actually a really useful note here, the Missile Launcher's Blast Mode makes it one of the few weapons that can actually easily punch down a Zeodron. Um, 
because the Zeodron, as I mentioned before, is functionally immune to armor piercing weapons, uh, you just use the template mode and you strip of, it, strip of its armor bonus from cover and you actually score that kill. So that that was good. Like, we got there in the end. Um, this is a good sort of like view of recovery. The missile launcher has taken down the Zeodron and now there is like, okay, meaningful casualty on the. Uh, significant casualty actually on the. Um, uh, Combined army side. Now the the real question is with five orders left, some of which will have to be spent pulling this link and this link forward. Are there any more casualties that can be scored? I suspect the answer is not a ton. Um, so they'll just shoot as well. Okay, McMurrow has made the dash. Um, so we've just had an order spent here, and McMurrow has moved up to see. It looks like two Zeodro two uh, Unidrons, and that's probably within chain rifle range. Yeah, it is. So they're shooting. He is, yeah, templating them, and you can just measure it. You don't need to <laughs> that fucking template away. Um, so that's two saves for each Unidron. He passes. Then the plasma. Sweet. And the four shots with the plasma. I think you hit with everything. Check if they he hits yeah, and crits. Six, so they should be on like 19s, I think. So, they don't so that's going to be not many saves for Mario. Oh, are, they, are, they, are they ballistic skill? 11. Ballistic skill 11. So the 17. 17s. The 17s okay, so I think you did quit yeah. then. Yeah, so that's a quit. So I think he yeah. takes an extra normal armor save. So that should be four, five armor. Saves and then four BTS save. Yep. Ben has identified that Murrow is properly fucked. So he's shredded. <laughs> so he evaporates, but he was already wounded, and diminishing this link offers some significant returns. Yeah, so he's functionally killed the first Unidron, and he has functionally killed the second. Both of them will go dogged. Um, because there's no reason not to. Both of them will go dogged. Um, Alright, well, they're both dogged. Uh, but no, that's no, that's a really good yeah, yeah. trade. Um, in terms of points, I think McMurrow traded down there. Uh, he's more expensive than two okay. Unidrons, or at least he's very close. Um, let's have a look. He might be 27 or something, um, whereas the, the Unidrons between them are 28. Uh, but stripping orders, and especially stripping the link bonus from that, that death core. Yeah, he's 27, and they, between the two of them are 28. That's still totally worthwhile. I think that trade is, is entirely reasonable. Um, Having orders out of the combined army list, having a cool link bonus out of the combined army list is a big deal. This is going to limit that legate's ability to just trumple up here and kill the entire Brigada Corps. Which, to be fair, he would actually struggle with. There are high armor, he's damage 14, etc. But... So, this leaves Ben with one command token, one regular order, and three regular orders. And he has to use some of those orders to get this uh, Harris clear. These guys, but I don't know. <clears throat> just backing up slightly there. Um, did you rewind time or did I rewind time? I think you did. I don't think it mattered. Though. Sorry, my finger, my finger must have. My finger slipped. They were asking about who rewound there, and the answer is Ben because he's the one who made the, <laughs> the server. No one else can. Um, Ben's identified that this is a good place to put the uh, Harris team, and I think he's absolutely right. Yep. This is actually something I really like about this map in particular, is I love I love nooks on maps. I love places that you can move up to, which like aren't safe. I made air quotes there and you didn't see it, obviously. But which just are a little bit like defensible. Terrain that is interesting to occupy. And it's something that we often don't see. It's very, very common to just have... Like, imagine this building was just a fucking box with none of this, like... Couchement off the side. It's really boring. Um, you you hit one side, you're vulnerable to being flanked. Hit the other side, you're vulnerable to being flanked. That's actually well and good. Like absolutely, it should be possible to catch players out of cover. Um, but it's just it's nice to have bits and pieces of terrain that you can occupy and kind of like if you can just take a certain piece of ground or you can just you have it in your deployment zone. You have these little nooks. Places that are just a little bit more challenging to punch into. Um, and like they're common in some respects. Like this this balcony here is a nook, right? If you prone down behind that, you're pretty safe. 
until your opponent has super jump or this or that or whatever, but just like bits and pieces. And this this terrain makes good use. Like, say, say this building here. There's no nook here. There's no like safe spot. Um, this bridge certainly isn't. Oh, actually, with the terrain on it, there's a couple of places on the bridge that you could like occupy and hunker down on if you push far enough forward. But just like little little bits and pieces of terrain that like offer some some advantage beyond just being like a brick in the middle of the table. Um, and Ben, in this case, has correctly identified that this is a really cool spot to hunker a link down in. Um, now, he will be punished if, for example, a model with a plasma rifle, such as Kurnow or the Umbra, moves up here and puts Plunging Fire down into that team. Um, but that's on, that's on Ryan to notice. Okay, so there's just a bit more, yeah, a bit more moving around, and my strong suspicion is that we will end up with, yeah, the Brigada team nooked in around here, probably on the low ground, but making good use of the cover available to them. Um, yeah, we've got the the uh, Hagua Harris in here, and I think. Ben has quite sensibly triaged the situation, and yeah, this Moran is if he dies, he dies, and likewise the transductor zones. They might, they might live, but it's a uh, it's lap of the gods level stuff. So I think this has been a really solid recovery. Um, in situations like this, there's a lot to learn from. Like as much as we talked before about how like. You know, just eh, maybe the players just agree that those two crits didn't happen because it doesn't make us useful a practice game. For Ben, I think, even if he loses this game, which he might, but he won't for sure, um, the position that he's in is going to be tremendous in like trying to learn how to winkle his way out of these situations in future games. Because you run into these things, like if you're playing tournaments and you just you just shoot out of luck and you get double crit on sevens by a Zedron across the table that's shooting your missile launcher at 31 inches. Um, then you got to learn how to fight your way through that. And, like, you don't always, but learning it, like, playing it, getting stomped on, making a few moves that might help you recover, mean that the next time you run into it, you're that much better prepared, you're that much better equipped. So, I, I respect Ben's decision here. I think it would probably have made a more interesting game <laughs> for the viewers if we just sort of quietly assumed that the, uh, the, the, um, Brigada team succeeded the first time rather than the second, but I could well be wrong about that. And I think we've learned some interesting things here about how to push your way, like how to how to triage a bad situation. And again, as noticed, if um, I think Ben would have probably saved himself an entire order if he had done what he did the second time around with that Brigada missile, which is to pull it down in the same order as engaging the uh, the Zeodron, because she did eventually kill the Zeodron. Um, it's also very worth noting that like, in terms of casualties. Um, Ben's push has killed three models of a 10 model army and four orders of a 13 order army. That's pretty significant. The problem is that he's had to leave a lot in the zone. He's had to leave two transductor zones, Jazz, Billy, a Moran, and... It actually looks like maybe uh, even some of the Brigadas. I don't know what this Daktari is doing, but like, that is not safe. They need to push a lot further forward. We'll see if they do. Well, there's just some move and dodge. Uh, oh, no, the, okay, so, yeah, all right, so here we go. So Ben has not been able to exfiltrate this Brigada link. So we're beginning to make the saves. And we have a wound. So the Brigada missile launcher has gone unconscious. Wounded Brigada, unconscious Daktari, unconscious Billy, unconscious Transductor Zond. Oh, just one for Jasmine, right? 
Oh yeah, just one. Um, I think she passed bow, no ace of fail. Yeah. So does Jazz survive? Jazz is okay, Jazz not surprising. Is... BTS six. Um, and then this transact is on to Miss Moran. So this is this is where the savagery comes out, like the. Yeah, no, another. So. Yeah, this is. And the the Moran is down as well. Um, Jazz surviving is good, but I think, frankly, the Moran also needed to survive, and the Brigada missile needed to survive. Um, as is, there are a lot of casualties that, yeah, I think the Brigada HMG, the HMG took a wound at some point before, and now he's unconscious as well. So, this, this line here, you can see this cliff face, is where the biotech war zone begins, which means that Ben needed to push very far forward, much further forward than he did. Um, and the wound that the Brigada HMG took from unopposed shots from the multi-marksman, oh, Zeodron, so has come back to haunt it very badly. It almost would have been better in many respects if this link had just, the entire turn, had just sat here on the market ledge, firing missile launches until the Zeodron was dead. Um, because the cost that it has accrued, it has not escaped the zone at all, and it has just moved up into... That's murder death kill range i think of this legate and okay if i had to make a turn for a, uh, uh if i had to make a, a a guess for how this turn would go i suspect that this umbra legate is going to move forward and kill the regarder multi-rifle and the evader i just need to check something real quick on and on my hmg boy this umbra samaritan what? is going to move up oh, and wow. kill this entire link it's on and that that's the game. I reckon with the orders that Ryan has, he uh, has so nine to, orders, uh, and he can spend the lieutenant orders nine. on the legate. I think the uh, the uh, Umbra are the pieces yeah. here to uh, back here, the to to make a close to this game. Um, Come around two. Now, so there's right. no retreat in Biotech Four, <laughs> so we might <laughs> we might be treated to a a final turn of just uh, faffing around doing classifieds, but. Uh, if you look at like where plasma rounds can hit, if Kernel or the Umbra move up and plasma this Jaguar, it's going to clip Senior Massacre. Um, so the second half will be dodge. So for the for the for the for the um, for the Gumby. Ah, uh, Ryan, Ryan is doing it. Move dodging. HMG boy. Actually, the Vulcan is in, so we'll see if he he does pass yet. He's going to end up yeah. Oh no, he's not move dodging, he's just getting past the crazy coiler. Okay, so Ryan, I think you're doing this wrong. Um, Ryan is moving up this heavy infantry team. I think of the options he had, this is the only one he shouldn't have taken. Now, it is a fair point to say that the Vulcan shotgun from this ledge is very dangerous to these models, right? Like it is, it's, it's, it's caught them... It's caught them in the it's caught them in the ass basically, um, and it can move up without fighting any of this stuff. But losing the Suriat is one of the few ways that Ryan could still lose the game on the last turn. And if you consider alternatively, uh, like cool. the Umbra is just a better gunfighter. Sorry. It's in a core link and has memotism, uh, and yeah, it can it can actually, honest to god, the Umbra. You probably shouldn't do this, I don't think it's got a dodge bonus, but you could almost have it just like run up here or run down there and stab this Brigada in the freaking face. But certainly you could have had it move like along here, gunfight the Evader, and then just come down here and get into CC with the Brigada. Um, and the Umbra will definitely mess you the fuck up. Um, martial Arts for DACCW, CC22, etc. It's actually not a true melee expert, it's quite good. But it's it's just quite good, but it will definitely kill, like a Brigada. And then similarly, I think the effect of plasma shots into this link would have been much like would have been probably as good as um, the 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 fight that he's taking, and would not have exposed his very expensive lieutenant <laughs> heavy infantry. So it is what it is, um, but. At least he can spend kind of like all of his orders. Oh, the other thing is, is he like has to break this link in order to spend lieutenant orders on this Suriat. Nice. But I don't begrudge him wanting to use the tools that he has. Um, so let's see what happens. Can you see me now? Can I? I don't think so because I think your tool 
actually turn one up. Looks like we just have some dodges or something happening here. Um. No, you can say it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, do you mind if I just um like my attention was tapped? Yeah, no. Do you mind if I just move my shit very slightly? Yeah, yeah. So he's just moving the moving the um HMG turret, so it's not like visible or getting templated or anything. Cool. I think if I so that was a fast stop, I think. Yeah. Plasma on that Jaguar would have just like Senior Masakari would only have been dodging on tens. And if Senior Masakari dodges, that means that Harissa's ARO is probably dodged, which means that the the Jaguar can't smoke back on two dice. Like <clears throat> the potential for an easy casualty. Okay those facings like, that? like you could literally just have had the Umbra come. Actually, you could have just had the Umbra jump up to like here and had that gunfight. Might have been out of range. Probably would have done two movements to do it. I think move around to here, then oh, take the gunfight from I'm here. And like once they're up here, like what are the fucking Jaguars going to do? They Sorry. can't get up there. They have to come all the way around. The plunging fire yeah, down absolutely. into this this uh, this nook would have been I don't know. Would have been wonderfully savage. But it's the Suriats instead. I assume that this Brigada is meant to be up against that, which makes it fairly difficult, but I think you could have caught this Brigada out of cover from up here. Although that's probably light flamethrower range, so it sort of depends. I um, I think in Ben's spot, if that Umbra moved up to see the Brigada, I would 100% take the flamethrower shot. And just trust in my armor soaps. Because you're, Ben's Ben at this stage is like, he's rolling dice to try and win the game. None of this stuff that's unconscious in the zone is getting out. So no one can see my duo now. Yep. Oh well, just some faffing around with the Surya. Don't think that back no, Good. You can a bit closer. They can same. No. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay. I'm gonna pop a. Pop squat. Um, this guy's just gonna come out soon. Yep. <clears throat> that. Okay. Oh, oh, can you get it? Can you get it? Okay. So I guess now, <laughs> now he's moving the umbra. What? And to be fair, he has forced some zone of control dodges, which have resulted in some kind of shitty facing yeah. from the corregidor. Oh god, there's even a line through there. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Woo! So this is some yeah. very nice, mm -hmm. very nice gunfire, and this is the kind of stuff that plasma mm -hmm. can do. Is just you, you hit Another these splashes that just do so much damage. And he's just gonna go. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so the two point ones are there, and then I think I'm not sure if my. What is very worth noting is that the. Combined army is down to three regular orders and two lieutenant orders. I I strongly question yeah, this Suriat movement. But we've got some good plunging fire here. And frankly, if this Harris goes down, it's just kind of the game anyway. Like some good kills were scored. Um, I do actually wonder, I wonder what Ryan's classifieds are. That's very briefly. Uh, while, while they're faffing around doing this, let's talk about the classifieds that each player has, uh, has drawn. Um, so, so um, three shots. we have data scan. Uh, two oh, shots, pieces of plasma carbine, if you don't have a HVT hand. kidnapping. Sweet. Two shots. No idea what and I'm going on, but see. Doesn't like me. Oh. I don't think he gets a... Some powerful lag. So it's either... Yeah, it's just one hit on a 10. Oh, because it's been a... Just one hit, yeah. There we so go. I'm just thinking. And we'll say that follow up. doesn't get a dodge, but these guys do. I okay, alright. Where is the enemy HVT? So BTS, so okay, all right. So moving these makes a little more sense in context of the fact that 
Ryan wants to be able to follow up with his heavy infantry. Yeah. Um, is a critical pass on a 10 yep. is the cliff is 13. Then mm -hmm. the other drag. Yep. Yeah. And then for Ben, he has net undermine and extreme prejudice. Those are good classifieds. Um, uh, but is the template big enough to hit him? I think he's out of the blast range. Right? He's lucky, is it? Yeah, he's out, so he's fine. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah totally fine. All right, so there's, there's a bit of sense in the decision to choose to move the Suryats forward if what Ryan was thinking was that he wanted to do the net undermine classified. But I think in the situation that he's in, he almost wants to just like kick the bejesus out of his opponent and then do classifieds in the last turn. Um, because, because Ben is going to be going into his last turn intensely down on orders. Does make it harder for you, so I guess we'll have him. Um, and I really don't think there's going to be any like, particularly if those Suryats live, and the Umbra lives, and Kernel lives, etc. The the points that like survive on the board, and endure, is enough to really materially make the difference. Oh man, my. I'm gonna say if Yeah, my internet is not loving it. <clears throat> okay. So, I can see a wound there. It looks like it's on the Jaguar or something. Um, presumably the Jaguar has gone dogged. Is that my internet going terribly or your internet going terribly? I think it's fine. Yep. Okay. Um, so just in terms of how we might have executed that alternate line of play, um, the Umbra Legate is standing here, so maybe the Suryats stay where they are. And the Legate moves up and around to here, not in line of fire of anything yet. And then he comes up and around to here, which catches this Brigada out of cover. Problem with that is high chance of getting barbecued. On the other hand, high chance of actually killing the Brigada. You'd be firing... That's Actually, not necessarily more than eight. Um, may well not be. So, all right. What's the other line of play? You come around here. Boarding shotgun evader. I actually think you can just move. Because <laughs> the direction the brigade, the brigada is, the, sorry, the Ava is looking. It's looking away from where the Umbra will be. You could just kind of like move, 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 and then eventually like shoot him and then run into close combat to kill the evader. The reason why you might not want to do that is that you have to move into the biotech war zone to do it. But sooner or later, Ryan needs to kill these troops. The other option that he has is actually just moving the unidrons up or putting things in suppressive fire to cordon them off again, just to make their subsequent retreat out of the biotech zone more challenging. I, um, yeah, I don't begrudge him ultimately deciding that maybe this, okay, this fight is in the too hard the box, um, and that these are things he wanted to pick on to instead. Both of them, I don't know if it can, but target will be this guy. And All right. this Jaguar will... Sorry, it's moving up. So this is going to be a Vulcan shotgun fight. Okay. See if it's going to take, uh, if it's going to fire so hit mode or, or template. Smoke, it has to, doesn't have to target the same thing. This Jaguar will chuck smoke. Yep, sounds good. All right, so with the Jaguar throwing smoke, it looks like I think oh, the Surya in this instance just fires template. Um, ooh, I guess I'm going to have to. Uh, ooh, yeah, because I'm, I'm not sure a small template can hit all of them, but it can certainly hit at least may, like he can hit two on massacre, on one on the Jaguar, one on the Jaguar focus. by splitting the burst slightly. Actually, if it's the top of his silhouette, it will. Yeah. Yeah. What hit the Mulan though? Because that makes it illegal. <laughs> um, no, no, because you can you can throw it while it's up here. Yeah. Okay. Like what I've seen you up there. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, for yep. sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> uh, that changes everything. Um, <laughs> and what does e what does EM do? EM is two BTS saves at half BTS. Ah, oh, so this is cool. So Masakari is throwing his EM grenades. You become isolated and immobilized because of heavy infantry. Because you're That's better very cool. you don't get isolated, but you'll be immobilized. All right, sounds good. Uh, so it's not yep, bad uh, for you because you're more wack. So, but. yeah, I'm going to just boarding shotgun. <laughs> Yeah. Right. The so the Vulcan shotgun is taking the shot. Masakari is gonna. So it looks like they're going to like basically the the Jaguars will just eat shit from the Vulcan shotgun in order to uh, to score kills. Um, 
the Suriat Lieutenant is prone and is not going to be isolated by an EM grenade because it's a Morat. Um, which is a really nice point about Morats, actually, is that their, their Morat heavy infantry and tags are much less vulnerable to electromagnetic weaponry than they were last edition. Because now the like effective EM weapons... EM weapons are incredibly good in N4, but they're incredibly good because they stack both the isolated and mobilized states. And the immobilized state you reset out of on a minus three or a minus 12 if you are also isolated, but of course Morats cannot be isolated because they're veterans, which means that the... Um, in fact, all the, the, an EM grenade is, is it's, in a, it's basically it's a cyber mine. Cyber mine. It just causes mobilization. Alright, so let's see what happens. So HMG is bricked. Uh, yep, and for the other dude... I think both of those models have just been immobilized. Uh, Masakari is dead. So they're both... they're, they're both got. <laughs> immobilized, but not isolated. Which is important. Yeah. Okay, um, then... does, does the yep. link still exist? No, because I think Senior Massacre was the technical. No, 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 not your link. <laughs> does my um, link still I exist? I think yours still does, because it... No, because you're not isolated, because you're immune to it, so yeah. the Link team still exists. Yep. Okay. So what presently we have here is a Link team of two immobilized yeah. models. Sure. Which means that he can actually one order reset both of them, which is kind of cool. It's like the shittiest silver lining imaginable, but, we'll, but it is kind of cool. So just two smokes. Yep, so smoke goes down and... Like that. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, so I'm going to... Um, use my second to last order to, <coughs> yep. um, to reset. So yep. for my HMG, yep. uh, on 10s. Yep, he's... no. Oh! That was stupid. And I get wild in the For weeds. my other guy? Yep. No. No. Nah. <laughs> right, let's try that one more time. Okay, so at this juncture, HMG. Ryan is electing to reset. Yes. Alright, that was bizarre. And for my other guy... No. Okay. Alright, so, now I'm going to use my Lieutenant Order. So it looks like the HMG has cleared himself off, and the, uh, <laughs> the other one hasn't. I am... I am skeptical of this play. Um, this has been, like, five orders to kill Senor Masakari. I'm just going to... I'm not 100% on that. <laughs> Oh, no. If I'm being honest there, Ryan, I'm not 100% that's the play that you needed to make. Um, the Harris breaking is nice. Um, the Jaguars, like, are dangerous, but they're not... Without Masakari, the Jaguars are going to have a much harder time pushing out through this Overwatch. Because ja Masakari was the model with the gun. Um, a close old look at your at your man. Yep. Okay. And, and Ryan is using his lieutenant orders here to do... Yeah, so this is what we talked about before. Was that this, this play kind of came off the back, presumably, of... Yeah. So it's, uh, the fact that he has follow-up as his uh, one of his classifieds, and it is very good to do classifieds. Um, so he's just going to make a lieutenant ro whip roll using his yeah. lieutenant, and he will successfully yeah, follow so... up the HVT. Um, um, which is nice. Among other things, that equalizes and... the classified score, and as we mentioned before, classifieds are important in this scenario. Um... And there's kind of like one lieutenant order left, and I feel like you just put the Syriat in suppressive file. So right? Because... What do you still have a lot Nothing's going to... I mean, the biggest... Yeah, honest to God, the biggest risk guard, uh, is a Jaguar making it out and up of here in order to kill the Surya in close combat. So maybe you run it backwards? Or you put it in suppressive mm -hmm. fire. It's one of the two. Because <laughs> there's sure as hell, like, the fuck all guns <laughs> down here. <laughs> maybe the Brigada... Actually, honestly, the Brigada... Oh. Multi rifle. If he gets in the right position and he comes like doop doop doop, and he makes it through suppressive fire around, like he gets to here and then up to here, and he got to uh, here, he could probably take a gunfight within sixteen, just fucking barely. He doesn't want to spend the out or just to do anything. Yeah, okay, so he's gone into suppressive fire. Yeah, that was that was his. Oh, you have spent his last. Yeah, suppressive fire is the like. Okay. Awesome. Play to win. Running away is the play to not lose. Um, which I think is fine. It's certainly more interesting.
Um, now, as the Jaguars um, move, was, um, Jaguars do not have stealth, uh, which means that every time so the Jaguars move, um, they, this guy will this, get a, a reset yeah, looking for a 10. So he has a pretty good chance of getting himself clear before the end of the turn. And if he doesn't, whatever, he's still, he's still worth points, he's still providing a regular order. Yeah. Okay. So we, we muster the sort of the orders that Corregidor has access to right now. We can see that there's Jazz. A Brigada multi rifle, a wounded evader, two Jaguars, and no command tokens. Uh, so it looks like three regular and one irregular, possibly. I'll have to wait for um, Ben to update that, but I think it's. I think it looks like yeah. So, so with no command tokens, <laughs> Jazz is. <laughs> on the wrong side of town, basically, because she can't get out of the zone. And She's in her deployment zone right now. She hasn't moved, which means that she <laughs> can't <laughs> escape. Um, oh, she might be able to try and do a classified, stay. otherwise she is hoping to make another BTS roll. And she has a serious problem in that her path out of the train is watched by a suppressive fire heavy infantry. So I guess she could move to these barrels and take a... Frankly, what she does, he's right, fine. is she does nothing and yeah, he's prone. He failed his three okay, so orders, he um, there are three or three or four orders so that order Ben can spend, so and I think this is the, like, this is the Mobile Brigada's time to shine. Oh, I think he is the he one that can potentially point. get oh, this right? mess okay, cool. sorted. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, like, just has so to roll for it, me. right? He has to go... Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't to... happen at the end of the order, it happens... He has to come to here and to here yeah, and come up this I way. It's, From it's here... Wording, yeah, it's like, it's okay. So he has to run through the open, um, take a gunfight, survive, which and then get inside 16 and take like gunfights against the suppressive fire, fire model, three dice tens to three dice tens. <laughs> And win. To, to All the while, this legate will be dodging to get line of fire on him, okay, so we're gonna have this or into close combat. Order, but it is the play to make. Uh, so, okay, so he's going for this ladder, and going for this ladder is going to get him past the Syriat, but into line of fire of the legate, which is actually pretty okay. Um, when I was looking at this, I was like, oh, it doesn't escape the Syriat, but actually it does. Um, How far did he move? And so if he can come all the way up here... I think it was 2.2. <sighs> so yeah. this is 4.4. The Legate probably actually dodges. Yeah. Except... Uh, is that... I think that's not line of fire to the uh, unit drive. The Legate definitely won't, because the Legate's prone, but I think the missile... So I think, I think the Legate dodges a a... to try and get I prone. I see the missile, but... but we'll see. They're looking for line of fire now. Ooh, yeah, ooh, know, that might be. Okay. What do you yeah, think? Looks... No, no, yeah, I don't think, I don't think so either. That might be line of fire. Uh, in that case, the um, shit, no, I had to mention that before. Uh, no, we're all good. So the Vulcan shotgun, I assume, is that. Uh, oh yeah, did did you see me as you? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, would so, definitely yeah. see you. Just yeah. uh, so he's gonna reset uh, on a ten. Yep. Um, anyway. do we just? I mean, honestly, it's probably just there. So if I keep moving... Forward, so among other things, that's a reset on the... Um, uh, sure, yeah, which is nice. Apparently he had line of fire. Uh, he must be standing, not prone. That's interesting. Also, yeah. I think this negate probably gets a dodge. Uh, no, 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 I'm not going to... Because I was okay. ha I was hanging out for the missile launcher to missile you, so I, um, yeah. I decided... Okay. Like, so I let's see what... To, uh, got here let's the, see what this uh, play for all the marbles I have to, if I for the Brigada him, is. Looks like the Lieutenant Order has been spent, which will leave him with sure three orders after this. I and I can't measure him in spectator right. mode, but I would assume that this is about a five-inch so, tall uh, um, thing, which has given him just enough to orient at the top. should be on, like, some bad number, like a seven. Yep. So, three shots with my multi rifle. Whoa, 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 what are we doing? I'm firing my multi rifle at this guy. I just he'll, he'll... Are you in my back arc? No, but, but because he's resetting, because this was the order where I moved up here. I wonder why the oh, Brigada is oh, shooting... Oh, sorry, I thought that was the, um... Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought that's that was uh, the second... Yeah, no. yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought that was the second half of your move. Okay, cool. Yeah, sweet, man. So, did the nine hit? No, I, I'm on sevens, because you're in cover, and, um... Yeah. Well, I assume, like, so the Brigada has missed its shots. Cover, like, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, so he's in cover totally. Um, so it's been an order on the big Gidu. So at which point do I see your missile moving? I think if you move it, move. I think if you move forward, like at all. Yeah. So how far can a number negate? Is this like it is standing? Did he not ARO? He must have dodged. So it must have been that the he. So what's happened is the Brigada has moved forward, um, and it's moved forward to not see the Unidron missile launcher, but see the Umbra Legate and see the Suryat. The Legate, knowing that there's a flamethrower, has dodged. And he's fired three shots into the oh, resetting right. Suryat. Oh, As it happened, yeah, he's missed all of them. The Suryat has made his reset. Um, uh, do I see his and I think now what we have is we have a play here. Oh, yeah, a play for all of the yeah, marbles. Um, now, the, uh, almost certainly what's going to happen yeah, is if the so Regatta moves forward to see... The marker will disappear as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> to see everyone. To him, I think what you go is you go <laughs> two Spitfire shots, him, two no missile shots, and you're just like... And a long-range Vulcan shotgun shot, and you're like, you can't shoot all of us. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what Ryan does. I don't believe this um, this guy is wounded. Maybe he took a hit before. This is probably perfect. Oh no, you touched him. Now, if the if the Brigada Sorry. ends up here, he probably wants to go into suppressive fire because the most likely way he dies is with the HMG coming around and just shooting him until he's dead. Um, or he wants to like get up and around to here or something, because the Brigada surviving goes a very long way towards uh, yeah, equalizing the game. Yeah. Um, and it is kind of like just a point. There's a very reasonable complaint made by Nomad players often, particularly Corregidor players, that their lieutenant options are sparse, and they 100% are yeah, right. Like your choices are Alguacile, Brigada, uh, Wildcat. Um, and that's, I think that's actually it. Uh, if we actually go to army right now and we filter, we filter by skills lieutenant, I would be surprised to see a fourth option. Um, yeah, no, that's it. Uh, there are two Brigada lieutenant choices. There's the boarding shotgun and the multi-rifle. So really, like, it's the Brigada. The Brigada is most often your lieutenant, um, particularly because the Alguacile costs SWC, uh, coming in at one. So... Corregidor is almost always the faction of the Brigada Lieutenant, which on one hand is like a 32 to 35 point tax, but on the other hand, you get this situation where the game is coming down to the real pointy end, and you happen to still have a 6-2 move, BS-13, armor 5, BTS-3, 2 wound motherfucker, as your active piece with an extra well, order. Um, so, as much as it... really important one is I'm going to fling a... Uh, a as much as it sucks, um, the... No, they don't, they don't, they don't. I'm thinking about okay. a different thing. Yeah, as much as it sucks, um, the, 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 to have to have constrained lieutenant option. options, yeah, okay. it is a good choice. Like, At the lieutenant then, that you've got access to here is not two, bad. Two Spitfires, two... Uh, yep, okay. So we've got, we've got, we've got Macho Man, Macho Man, Mobile Brigada, moving forward, and he is going to be taking a long-range Vulcan shotgun shot, a short-range Spitfire shot, and two missiles. Yeah, someone set them up real good. I mean, you could probably take the missile on by itself, if you, like, oh, actually, no. Is this Legget, this Legget must be prone. Um, and what's happening is that he is disappearing into the fucking, the, the, the markers are disappearing into the terrain. Yeah, I think you do end up taking both of them, Alright. Might be some finagling of positions. It Let's just see what goes on. But uh, I think Ben's only got so many orders and he needs to he needs to really pull so, some pull some um, so which one pull some big W's out here. Uh, I should have to grab my burst. So I guess we'll So we'll just wait to see how resolution this goes. Is so we'll put two shots into this thing and one shot into this thing. Sweet, sounds good. Uh, so the free Vulcan shotgun shell. <laughs> um, at long range and you're in cover. Probably oh, yeah, one shot on a ten. I don't actually think he's in cover here. Uh, yeah. Actually, am I? No, no. Would be no, actually your silhouette yeah. because you're standing up, so I'd be out of cover from yeah. your point of view still. Yeah. So, it, so it's only neg three. Yeah, because that's. Yeah, well, so check. It should be within twenty-four, which it is. Yeah. So it's just neg three. So tens. Yeah. Okay, so here one comes the uh, the boarding shotgun. Or well, Vulcan or shotgun here. Misses on a twenty. Fire mode. Okay, so which one do you want to do first, Spitfire or Missile? Okay. Yeah, so the Missile now. Okay, so I should be a bunch of dice on 13. Yeah. Um, no, so yeah, the, the Brigada here will be two shots on 16s versus 16. the Missile probably being two shots on 8s. But if the Missile hits, that's... um. 
That's uh, it's not looking good for our hero. So, so snake knife will cover so two hits. Be an eight, I think. The uh, uh, do I see you at outside sixteen at any point? Or I oh, know it's well, flats, the, the, isn't the, it? yeah, yeah. looking yeah, for a, basically a missile launcher is looking for a crit here. Yeah. Nope, I two misses. So that's two hits into the missile launcher. Cannot two. kill it because of um, dogged and uh, total the the, the whole uh, thing. So it takes a wound. So the oh, the unitron will be going dogged. Good. Which means that it will uh, die at the conclusion of this order, which is nice. Um, okay, and so now it's just the there's the question of like one shot, <laughs> one shot on tens versus probably two shots. Got me once. Yeah. Okay. So a spit just a Spitfire hit gets through and causes a wound. So the Brigada is wounded, but not dead. Spend an order. So, okay, looks like he is. I mean, by, for for God's sake, stop activating the Brigada at this point, right? Because at this juncture, he's killed this. He's alive. I mean, I guess what else do you do, right? Like, you can't activate anything around here. Does that Umbra have line of fire? No, never. Yeah, I mean, I, as much as I'm like, stop activating the Brigada, actually don't. <laughs> Actually, like, the Ava, the Evader, is not going to die. It's not wounded, right? So it's Sorry, fine. That Sarah locked herself out the flat. <laughs> In the zone. Uh, yeah, sweet. So you're good to continue? Yeah, 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 keep going, man. Okay, so I think there's actually, should still be one order after this one. Because there was Alti order to move up. Yep. Order doing so actually, really, the brigada, the brigada just has to take fights and win them. That's that's that is Ben's way out of this situation, and the entire time he's taking slugs from this Suriat, which he just has to ignore, um, while he kills these, and it's sort of not ideal. But at the same time, he can't stay where he is. Like if nothing else, he's probably just within six inches of this uh, this Umbra, which means that he's dead. Um, so. I, I respect the decision that Ben has made here. This is just like, if he just keeps winning gunfights, right? He does one more wound to this thing, which now is on, still on ace to hit, and he does another wound to the Legate and kills it. It seems to be wounded for some reason. There's a wound marker next to it. Missile and pistol back. Which one do you want to do first? If he can just if he can just win all of the gunfights, then maybe he's in the game. Yeah. So four. Missile rolls a four. Oh dear. Okay. I suspect that's the that's the pivotal face-to-face -face roll. Um, the missile has landed a hit and is knocked. Yeah. So there's a there's a, an earth-shaking explosion and the brigada gets knocked off his feet. He is now unconscious. Um, and actually, for good measure, it looks like the Umbra wins its face-to-face -face roll as well. Um, He's still not going to do much against a Brigada in cover, but it doesn't matter because the uh, the second wound gets dropped. So there's really only one, there's one order left in the main combat group, and then Jazz is SOL because she's stuck behind a suppressive fire Suryat. Um, we'll watch a bit longer, we'll sort of see what happens, but I suspect Ryan's last turn is just doing both of his classifieds. If you recall, they were the veteran thing. <laughs> Probably doesn't do net undermine, actually, probably just secures the HVT um, and whatever the other is. Am I going to lag Ben's computer out horribly if I change my color to Game Master and go back and take another look? So, HVT kidnapping and data scan. Okay, so probably what he does in the last turn. Um, I'll just pistol you and you'll dodge As we sort of like shift our yeah, thinking to Ryan, me. is that he data scans with this Umbra Samaritan, one of these unconscious models. Double crit again. Uh, he secures the HVT. So two hits. Do we take the something is shooting something? No, he's fine. <laughs> uh, takes okay. one wound. Oh, no. No, he's fine because it's a pistol and you're on cover. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, like ten go. plus four for your armors is perfect. I have no idea what's going on here, but it doesn't uh, matter. Um, so yeah, Ryan probably looks yeah. for a data scan and then secure the HVT. If you can do that in biotech four, I think you can. Um, no, 
I'm standing up. And like, that's strong. kind I'll of just, on, that's kind of the game. Um, I'll keep strong. Okay, we'll have Jazz. Yep. So, Jazz has just moved yeah. up, and she's very yeah. obviously yeah. moved into line of fire of, yeah. looks like yeah. both yeah. Syriats, actually, but like, she, yeah, she, she's yeah. receiving you to just this Syriat HMG. I'm going to suppress right at you. <sighs> and this is going to be pretty bad. It's 15 inches, which is actually just kind of, it <laughs> doesn't matter, it's just terrible. So, it's, the Syriat will be on 10s, Jazz will be on some 7s or something. I think Jazz has hit on a 6 there. No, I don't get hit. No, she fives. needed fives. I think you're... It's within 16, so I should be... Just negative ah, so everyone so misses, so but... So you just miss. Okay, so yeah. nothing happens. So then I'll do the biotech ball zone stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going going through the motions here for the casualties. So, so Jazz... And of course all the dead ones and stuff. Um, do so sort of... Do first, I'm, I'm, I'm putting the cart before out. the horse here. Um, oh, Is there goes... Is that the evader or jazz? Um, it was one of the two. Okay, he's going to roll for everything. It does not. <laughs> Stop rolling for everything, Ben. Everything that is unconscious. Uh, actually, I suppose there is an evader engineer here. Um, so to, to put the cart before the horse slightly and assume that we have an onyx victory on hand, and I have incorrectly assumed that in the past... Um, in my commentary games, the game was a foregone conclusion. Never, never underestimate the ability of players to dis to snatch uh, victory from the jaws of defeat, and vice versa. The game certainly allows for comebacks, um, but to just sort of assume that the the game is a win of some description for the combined army player here, what could Corregidor have done differently? Um, so obviously, a major point is more efficient movement with the link, right? Um, which is very like very potentially significant. Um, in order to okay. avoid as bad a situation as they have. <sighs> Ultimately, though, <laughs> they needed to be able to occupy space that was past this line. So they needed to get up into this area in order to okay. be safe. And actually, Ben was entitled to know that. So At I deployment, he measured to put his HVT uh, forward, his H like blah, blah, blah. Uh, um, and... And so, in retrospect, the it's Brigada Missile Launcher's to... positioning here, like, Move the across. movement that he needed to take would, like was that. always mm -hmm. to carry himself to this oh, middle crap. field Can't here, or to go all the way up onto this Sorry, high ground. I, I and I think the assumption uh, that he would be able to take this high ground uh, so you from a determined uh, Onyx contact force, and especially from Unidrons, so, was maybe optimistic. Yep, in which mode? Um, uh, in the face so, mode. I think face it's mode. very possible that deployment should have been more central for Corregidor. Could be wrong. Um, and I also think, yeah, the, the inefficiency of movement. Um, I suspect, additionally, that his decision to use McMurra to try and lay smoke, etc., etc., I'm just not sure the attempt to recover the Brigada Missile Launcher <laughs> was worth as many resources as it took, although in the end, of course, she um, did kill the Zeodron. She yeah, did yeah, absolutely kill the Zeodron. And mm -hmm. two dice 16s to two dice 7s when the Zeodron, like, right, can we shoot um, still? will get yeah, seriously yeah. damaged or even destroyed by a missile hit. Potentially worthwhile. So, okay, so there's just uh, stuff so moving around, blah, 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 Syria moving on, etc., etc. Um, in terms of kills that, like, Ryan has to make... It's actually nothing. I mean, he, he should kill uh, this Jaguar, be, but otherwise he should do objectives. He should do classifieds. Um, with so much of the rest of his force yep. in incredible position, go there's not a tremendous need six, to really, uh, like, faff around more. It would be good to get the Legate uh, around the, and, like, put some shots into this, man. into this evader, yep. but that's kind of, like, last thing he has to do. Um, yep. So, but anyway, the Suryat is moving forward here. So, in terms of things the Suryat could do, this is a move. This is a play to get Civi back. Uh, now, is your HPT um, like a bad guy to me, or is it like a neutral fella? Or it should be a neutral because it's just the HPT. Yep. So, so he needs a sixteen here to Civi back because until you failed, the civilian does not count as hostile. So blah blah blah. Roll anything or. Um, so what Ryan is doing is he's going for the uh, civvy back and then to pull to out. Keep... I actually think it would have been easier to do okay, data scan so um, by moving the it's... Samaritan around here and just scanning the yeah, Moran forward observer. But because like, basically in terms of order efficiency, yeah, right? It would have been you could have moved six inches. Yeah, I think you do just dodge. 
I'll check the IGS And then move and make, move and make, move and make. Just double check that's the case, but I think you do just pick them. Alright. Um, so they're just they're just checking the super back rolls, but yeah, no, he gets a plus three to this roll. Is uh, annoyingly, it's the season book, but not the core build. <clears throat> I see back. So you're doing change back. Um, I'll do models. True, must be in contact with an hour, which been a standard mobile is more contact states. So now he has May. They're just reading out the um reading out the rules for CV back. But um it's a short movement skill, I believe, which means you can potentially declare it twice in one order. But until you fail, you don't suffer any you don't you have a bonus rather to the roll. So this yeah. should not be too hard for the Suriat, and then he can, uh, he should uh, pull the fuck away because he's in the biotech war um, zone right now. Um, so Ryan needs to succeed this and then get out. And if he does that, actually, he'll have done all of his classifieds because he can secure blah blah blah. Um, don't know if I saw a roll. Yeah, I haven't seen one yet, but um, this time. This okay, yeah. So be... somewhere in there, there's a successful civivac. This guy's gonna be the um, yep. the spearhead. Um. <laughs> And okay, cool. We got a coordinated order. Nice. So the Umbra is moving forward, etc., etc. So it looks like we've got the decision here from um, decision here from Ryan that he doesn't need to cause any kills this turn. I think he's absolutely right. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you just if you look at the order count, um, there is an evader with two orders. That's it. That's all he's got to spend. Uh, so. All right. There's no kills that are going to be made that will meaningfully change the outcome of the game. We'll do a quick check. We'll just jump into the ITS document now and, and go to Biotech 4 to make sure it's not a um, reinforced tactical link game. It might be. Okay, so it's no quarter, but it's not reinforced tactical link. So the lieutenant is dead. There's no command tokens. Um, so we can we can pretty much call this now. There is no need for Ryan to score any kills. Um, there are no kills that Ben can make. Um, literally, with one order per model on two surviving models, there literally is not a kill that can be made. Um, the Jaguar cannot reasonably kill anything. The Evader can't get line of fire to anything. Um, I mean, I suppose, theoretically, the Evader could, like, climb up here <laughs> and take a 20-inch shotgun shot against suppressive fire <laughs> in the hope of getting a crit and some failed saves. But re realistically, um, the game here is done. Uh, and to be perfectly fair to Ben, um, the a lot of the game was decided on those early dice rolls. The Regatta missile launcher got caught in a position where the core-linked Spitfire Legate was able to bring it down and did so very effectively. Um, it, the, um, ben elected to keep the missile launcher standing. Uh, that's actually something else that could have changed. It took two two goes for the Legate to put the missile launcher in the ground. Unconscious, rather. And absolutely, Ben had the option of going prone with it. And he used courage to stay standing. I think it is a very good chance that the correct play was to foul guts and drop out of there once you took the initial wound. Particularly once you take a face-to-face -face or you lose a wound and you're just facing the same face-to-face -face roll again where it's it's two dice tens to five dice fifteens. Um, that's... Even if the Brigada is tough, that's really not great. It's a really not good face-to-face -face roll. So right now we have a situation basically where Ryan has got all his classifieds, he's securing the HVT, etc, etc. He's also got the... Um, He's got the Suriat having done the uh, the the thingo, you know the thingo, CV backing. So the game here is sort of is done, but the dice on Ben, <laughs> some truly terrible ones actually, like failed smoke on twenties, needing nineteens, um, the missile launcher losing its face to face roll against the Zero to a double crit no less. Um, like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Ben, I think, has done a really good job of recognizing the plays that he could make to pull himself back into the game. This Brigada attack was one of them. The, like, the options that he had. There are some really good lessons to be learned here in terms of effective triage. And if the dice had gone back the other way and we'd had that same kind of situation where, like, the Brigada just double crits, 
a face-to-face -face roll and kills two of the three things that are shooting back at him, then, uh, and then actually the game is still really difficult. That Surya uh, HMG will just kill everything. But I think Ben stand. really identified the possible paths to victory. Actually, fuck it. He's just going to stand up. Um, so okay. there's, there's a little bit left to do here, but in this particular case, I am sure it is all over by the screaming. Um, so I'd like to, uh, we'll, we'll sit and we'll watch as these last few moves play out. Um, but I'd like to thank our players for agreeing to be recorded and commentated. Um, again, this is a practice game for the Remote Access League Season 3, which is beginning. Uh, entry closes on 29th of December. Um, first round matchups are announced on 30th of December. Uh, you can jump onto the Infinity Discord in order to... Jump onto the Infinity Discord in order to um, join the league, register, etc. It costs like all of nine dollars, I think, to actually um, join the ITS. Uh, so join the not join yeah, to join the ITS competition. There's a painting competition as part of it as well. Um, the aim is to have five games played in four weeks. Uh, I don't actually know the admin really well, but he seems to be a hundred percent on top of like the running this event. And there's a small team of TOs. The maps look absolutely sweet. So it has, it has my strong recommend. Um, if you see this in time, <laughs> if you see this in time to jump in and register. Uh, again, also as a reminder, um, I quite enjoy doing these commentated games. I can talk under wet cement. Um, it's good practice for work, among other things. Uh, and, and it sort of it adds to you get to see a game. I think it sort of like makes for reasonable listening at least, because you get to see a game that's played out without the dead air of. And I certainly do this the hmm, for five minutes while I'm considering a particularly ambitious play. So yeah, they're they're sort of just agreeing. They're they're talking about their classifieds here, but um, we'll do a quick points recap. Um, it looks like uh, so okay. So it's actually yeah. Ben has. So, Ryan has accomplished more classifieds, which is worth two points, and he's almost certainly killed more army points, which is worth two points, and I suspect he's probably got, I think he's probably got 150-ish points left. He's a good chance. He's lost a Zeodron, two Unidrons, so he might actually even have... Um, Three no, objective points for more stuff survive. I suspect, I suspect he's got, yeah, no, he's sorry, he's he's got uh, either two hundred between one fifty and two hundred and fifty points. So that's another two, and he's on all three classifieds. So that is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine objective points. Um, nine objective points to, I think one for courage or having done that classified. Um, so the players are just chatting that and wrapping that up now. In an event, that would be zero objective points, unfortunately, to Ben and the full five, um, four for a win and the offensive bonus. So four to Ryan, uh, zero, unfortunately, to Ben, and concludes the game. Um, as always, if you're interested in having your own games commentated, reach out. Um, if you're playing in the Remote Access League in particular and um, are comfortable being recorded, uh, it's very unobtrusive. Um, you will not even notice that I'm here. Um, drop me a line either on Discord. Um, I'm Robert Shepard on Discord, or I go by uh, Brisk and Deprodian in the... Um, Infinity Discord server, um, or via Facebook, or via YouTube, or whatever. So, thanks everyone who's made it this far into the recording at 1 hour and 56 minutes, and thanks very much for my players to agree to be recorded.